Okay. My name is Matteo Bertini. I work for Develer, a software and hardware firm in uh, Florence. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, simple CRTT in, um, in RAS. So, the acronym is already been ex expanded. Conflict-free replicated data types are <coughs> an abstract <coughs> data type that can, it's think to be replicated in a, a network and has the property that you are free to update the replica without coordination. And <coughs> eventually, when you need some uniform view of your state, you can merge all these uh, replicas together and converge to some unique state. And why are these CRGT interesting? They are interesting for these properties, and they are interesting also because some piece of software is uh, using them. So if you like, uh, uh, you can find them implemented in Redis, you can find them implemented in React, and uh, the Sigtex uh, engine uh, is the reason why I started to look about this stuff, because uh, in the implementation of the shared test stack, the, these kind of types uh, are used uh, a lot. So, this acronym is in fact double. We have two kinds of these uh, data types. We have the state-based one, where C stands for convergent, and in this kind of implementation and reasoning, we are moving the state, all the state, and merging the state, and the operation-based, where C stands for commutative. In that kind of implementation, we are moving only the operation. But they are formally equivalent, and the first one is a bit easier to think about. So we will try to understand something about them through some example. So let's dive in. Let's think about a little problem. We have a startup. We are starting to well, our, our new application. We are building our shared shopping list. And we'd like to have all the cool properties some kind of application must have now. So we'd like to work disconnected to merge in some interesting way when we, the network uh, is back. But we will soon end up with some kind of conflict because our we decided to literally take the list as data structure and the order is something that is creating us some problem. So we can make a step back and say, okay, in fact, the set can be enough to our shopping list. And this is the first intuition about CRDT. Not every data type is a valid CRDT. You cannot implement all the interesting features you'd like to implement if you, for all data types. But some of the data types are valid CRDT, and for them, you have all that cool properties. So we have this set, and we start thinking, OK, I can add pasta to my set. My wife can add pesto to my set. I can find that set union is some kind of valid way to merge them. And what I have created is something called, it's a grow only set, a set that can only grow because our operation in it, update is, our update operation is adding stuff and adding may only grow or if the item is already there, let the set and change it. And the merge operation is union and I'm not losing anything when I'm doing union. And so I'm quite happy with the solution. In Rust, I can implement this as a simple, a thin wrapper around uh, an hash set. I will add my value that is, is an alias for string this time to our, my set. The update is uh, local and requires no coordination. And whenever I need to merge with some other state, I will have a reference of the same type and return. We are not mutating here, we're returning a new copy, but that is, we are uh, returning a new type, a new instance of the same type. Here is another 
intuition about CRDTs. Both the add, the update operation, and the merge operation are growing, inflating, are not shrinking our data set. And this is something that we must ensure when we are developing some this kind of data types. And the merge operation has other cool properties because we can merge A with B or B with A and the result is the same. If we have more than two items, we can merge them in whatever order we like and the result is the same and we can merge A with A again and the result is A. And these are properties that must hold for CRDTs. And here kicking another cool aspect of these data types. Whenever you build something that works, that is verified, you can compose these small pieces together to build something more interesting. We have a set that can only grow. We can take two of these sets that are allowed to grow and compose them in what is called a two-phase set. We will have the set of the added stuff and the set of the removed stuff. Both of them are growing. Our merge function that is now appeared, appearing as a trait uh, is simply forwarding the merge to our subfields. But now we have to do something more. Before the grow only set, the, the action to the query we are doing on the set was simply having all the items back. This time we have to do some kind of operation. We have the stuff we added to the list. We added pasta, we added pesto. If I bite pasta, I put it in the removed set, and then I take the set difference. I have only pesto left to buy. <coughs> but it's not yet enough for our shopping list, because if I buy pasta, if I add pasta, I buy pasta, I cannot add pasta anymore, and this is a problem. So let's introduce another trick about CRDT. The tag trick. We had a simple string value. Our item was simply a string. This time, our item is a, a tuple of two items. The first one is some kind of unique tag. This time, simply a string. But usually, we are going to make to add the, to the item to the tag some more metadata. Usually, you uh, will have some kind of counter, some kind of timestamp. We know we cannot use it to order things because they are originated from different devices. But uh, we are only using this timestamp to make something unique, then some device ID or user ID or stuff like that, just to show something interesting to the user. The important thing is that it's unique. And then the value, what the user care about. Again, we can use composition. We are doing what is called an observed remove set building upon our two-phase set before. That was a set with two row-only sets. And modify a bit our uh, API, or at least. Our API is almost the same. When we are going to add, we are taking the value. This time is, again, a string. We are generating some kind of new unique tag, and we are adding the couple, the couple to, the, to the set. Whenever we are going to query, we are going to undecorate it. We are going to ask our sub-field uh, the items. It will do for us the difference. And we are going to show the user only the second part. Here is another intuition about CRDT. Most of the time, your state is more complex than what you want to show to your user. The state is some kind of uh, implementation detail of your uh, data type your user care only on about a part of it. And what changes, what we are introducing, is the strategy we are using to avoid conflicts. And this time, we use this kind of strategy. Whenever we are going to remove something, we are going to remove only something that we can locally observe. So for example, if I added pasta, it will be implicitly tagged as pasta Matteo. Whenever I am removing pasta, I will look up in my other set. I will look only for the user facing part of the, the value. I will 
add to the removed set all the matching tuples with all the matching tags I find locally in my added set. If before we merge, before I am removing something, someone else added again pasta to our shared set, whenever we merge, I will see popping up again pasta. And if I added some intelligent metadata, I can show that uh, Giovanni added pasta whenever, when indexed at time I was buying it, or one hour later, or whatever. And I can decide to call him or uh, to do something reasonable. And uh, this is up to the problem we are facing. <coughs> we have used, uh, this is uh, what is called the um, add win strategy. We can apply some remove win strategy or some other strategy. But it's up to the problem. The, what you want is to avoid conflicts and to apply the same algorithm on all your instances of uh, the code that runs around your data types. So some, try, some trait emerged from this uh, journey. We have an implicit one for sake of simplicity. We had only the function add and remove that were taking directly the value. We can have some kind of uh, update trait working on some kind of uh, enum and enforce what we said before, so that after an update, our state must grow. Our state, in fact, can be forced to implement partial order just to check that the, some order is uh, th th what the theory uh, asks us is verified. Then we have the merge trait that operates on the same type. It's closed. So I am working on our uh, observer to remove set, merging only with the same type and returning the same type. And we can see we have, you can find the formal uh, verification, but we can intuitively accept that uh, union is a valid merge operation uh, for sets, and the maximum is a valid uh, merge operation for uh, numbers. And then the query trait. Whenever we are going to ask something to our data structure, we must implement uh, this trait so that we can explicitly <coughs> declare what is the sub part of the state we'd like to show, or we can also generate something on the flight based on what's inside the state. And then a trait was hidden before because we had some kind of uh, anonymous uh, unique tag generator. Usually your tag will like to, will likely introspect your local state and generate some kind of next uh, tag for some kind of order you like to have. And so here the reference to the self. And again, this is a local and you can do, you can evolve your state without coordination. So um, in the abstract I talk about the CLI, uh, I have not time to show you here, but it's on um, the repo. And just to thanks some Crates I use, Clap and Structop are fantastic, and not in this project, but quickly is very neat to use. I use them some other command line tools, and here are some references. The first one, if you have time, it's very interesting. It's one hour and stuff long uh, video from Mark Shapiro. It was one of the name behind these data types. It will introduce the theory behind them. Uh, eventually consistent, uh, all the theory about uh, eventually, eventual consistency. And here is a paper that will introduce you a lot of uh, data types that are verified to be CRDT you can use. You can find uh, sets, counters, registers, uh, and then you can build upon them graphs. Uh, and if you are brave enough, you can reach the collaborative text editor state at the end. And uh, um, if you like to dip uh, on, the, on that aspect, um, inside the Xid editor documentation, is that there is a series of blog posts now grouped in the documentation that will explore all the 
uh, trade-off and all the problems you may find if you'd like to take from the toy level to something deri deri deliverable. Because here we are moving all the state. When the state starts growing, you have to find some compromise. You'd like to move less. And you'd like perhaps to forget something from the very, very old past. And you have to find some compromises about this. Here is uh, an implement. My code, you can find, is uh, very educational. Is, uh, you can find it from the steps from simple up and only set uh, to the up observer to remove set till a generic implementation. This is quite long if you want to require all of the partial equa as stuff you, you are required to. And um, if you do something like that, or if you do what uh, the author of RAS CRDT did, you can fire again all your check and requirements, something like quick check, and have some kind of uh, be sure that your code is uh, respecting the rules. And there are a lot of implementation in other languages you can look at. So what I, uh, I am suggesting is uh, it's not black magic. It's quite, uh, the paper are not so easy to read, but if you are accepting something by intuition and not going deep in uh, semi lattice uh, connected join uh, stuff uh, that you may perhaps know if you are a mathematician, you can build something interesting with CRDT. So thank you. OK, thank you, Matteo. Maybe we have time for a couple of questions. Sorry, here I am. So maybe that's not the point of the talk, but I saw a lot of uh, high-level structures used like HashMap, uh, and I immediately thought about performance concerns. So what are the solutions? So if you'd like to dip in the performance uh, problems, Perhaps the rope series is what you'd like, because it's, mm, the trade-off is between something you can easily use and something that is usable in reality with big text files, and the rope is using for the text editor are a bit complex stuff. And so he found a lot of good implementation solutions for while maintaining these kind of properties. But it's something that you can find on your exact problem, maybe. OK. Others? OK. Looks good then. Thank you, Matteo.